Aloha, thank you for joining. I'm Sira Dester and I channel a soul group of spirits that I call the Wild Ones. They were artists, um, musicians, actors, some celebrities, and I share their messages from the afterlife. It's been about two months since my last channeling. Um, that was uh, David Bowie. And okay, first let me share this dream <laughs> I have. I had um, about David. I was at the store, and suddenly David came in, and he was wearing. Well, he was looking cool, like always. He was wearing this rectangular uh, sunglasses, black sunglasses, and um, a wool suit very very dandy <laughs> and then it changed uh, to an old denim look with a um, kind of other constructed jeans um, it was deep blue indigo blue and he was he looked like in his 40s early 50s and he had a, a, a slight tone of violet on his hair and eyebrows and when I came closer I realized that his right eye was missing and in the dream I realized he had an accident and I was trying to figure out when I was like I knew about the pupil um, but I didn't I didn't remember that you lose um, uh, your eye and he was singing to me a song in English I sadly I don't remember the lyrics but it was the message was um, like I am the only one that can solve my own problems nobody can do it by me but me that was it and I was moved to tears. I, I hugged him in the dream and he held me tight, like it's going to be okay. And I just cry. And it's the second time that I dream about hugging <laughs> Bowie and I woke up feeling happy. Yeah. And I wanted to share the dream with everybody. <laughs> But yeah, um, and talking about dreams, I'm digressing. This I wasn't going to mention this at all. But anyway, so one of the I think the only person from the spiritual community that I follow that I relate to his teachings. Um, share something about <clears throat> people trying to contact him because they dream about him and they think they have a message for him um, or that they have some sort of a spiritual connection because they see him in dreams and this person uh, share a post saying that he doesn't show up in dreams to other people that when he wants to talk with people, he used the phone <laughs> or the email or text. Um, he just want his privacy to be um, to not people trespass uh, his boundaries. Um, and of course, it it's kind of sad that you have to make a post about that, like there is some kind of a spiritual paparazzi going on. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> the, the thing is, I have seen this person in dreams many times, and for me it's real. I share in the comments that for me it's real and significant, but of course I'm not going uh, to try to contact this person saying, oh, I dream about you, we, we have a, um, 
a connection, you have to listen to me, I have a message for you, and so on, because the dream is mine. So the message is for me, if there is any kind of message, and if it's not... When I share the dreams I have about, for example, Bowie now, or all the other dreams I have shared, I'm not saying that I actually connected with their spirits, um, but it's, I'm sharing the experience I have of them. It's just with the channelings. I always try to make clear that I have no way to prove this is real. I have no way to say that I'm really channeling their words, their messages. Mm. But I need, I feel cold, I feel inspired to share my experience of, of them. What I experienced as their spirits. Maybe it's not their spirits. Maybe it's just my own inspiration. <sighs> and so with the dreams. Maybe I'm not dreaming about them. Uh, maybe it's just my own inspiration trying to guide me using these archetypes. <laughs> Um, these artists, they mean so much for us that, for me, they, they become archetypes. Um, and beyond their lives, beyond their personal lives, or even beyond their art, their work of art, uh, something about them touches us as collective in personal ways. And... It awakes something within us. So it's not so much about them, but it's always about us. I don't know if I'm making sense. Anyway. <laughs> um, so it took me some time to make a new channeling because you might know that summer is my favorite season and I try to enjoy it as much as possible. So it's very hard for me to squeeze <laughs> time to channel because I just want to go to the beach. And right now I'm still grieving that summer is over. I'm very slow with my processes. I have a hard time letting go of things. So even when the school start almost a month ago, I still can't believe that summer when so quickly. It's like every year it seems shorter for me. And don't get me wrong, I love autumn, I love spring, and I think I'm making peace with winter. I just get uh, sick most of the time during winter, and that's why I don't really like it so much. But it's getting better. <clears throat> but summer... I just love water, it's when I feel, I don't know, myself. <laughs> so it's, it's really hard to, to not be able to go to the beach, to uh, go into the sea, because it's freezing now. And I, I live in Chile and we have cold waters. And um, I think up to the north of the country is better. Up here, not so much. <sighs> okay, so that's my rant. <laughs> mm, and I've been really, really rambling a lot. So thank you for staying with me. <clears throat> and I wasn't sure who was going to, <clears throat> to come forward for tunneling, but it's other thing about summers is that I read a lot and it's not always been like that I mean it was always like that when I was young when I was a little girl I um, definitely was hyper lexic when you read books that are for adults <laughs> and you read them at seven years old um, and I just realized about that when I when I tried to 
to look into my books for uh, a book for my kid and I'm like no it's not for his age how I was reading this at eight nine ten mm, who knows anyway and, and then I spent a lot of years without reading almost anything um, very specific stuff like I would go to the same author, authors every time, like David Foster Wallace, I channel him. And um, um, previous video you want to check out. And this Chilean author, uh, Roberto Bolaño, I would reread the same books over and over. And, and, but last year, last summer, I read all the books by Jane Austen. And it reignited my passion for, for books. So I've been reading a lot since then. And especially in summer. And last book I read, well, I finished Circe yesterday uh, by Madeline, Madeline, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, Madeline Miller. And before that, I read The Song of Achilles. Not sure about the pronunciation either. Um, very famous books. Um, they are exquisite. And when I was reading The Song of Achilles, I felt... Um, I suppose it's Achilles. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, but here we say Achilles. Um, I felt he was not a um, fictional character. Um, and I felt I could really feel his energy and also Patroglo. Um, so I'm going to give it a try. How about that? How do you feel about channeling <clears throat> Greek ancient heroes? I have no idea <clears throat> why I feel like channeling them, what kind of message can they have. Uh, but I've been looking forward for this, so can be fan. Right? Um, oh, and also I've been listening a lot to the latest Lana Del Rey album. <sighs> if you haven't, please do. <laughs> if you love poetry, beautiful music, and deep, meaningful lyrics, you should. Uh, go and listen. I, I fell asleep last night listening to the to the album. And even when I already knew about some songs, it is still <sighs> makes me feel like in a different planet. <laughs> it's like I'm high on Land of the Ray lyrics, music and everything. Um yeah. Anyway, let's go for it. I'm sorry if I'm a bit over the place. Uh, I have no idea how I'm going to do this and what I'm going to feel because with the wild ones, um, most of the musicians and actors, I feel I, I know them already. But I, I, when I was reading the book, um, yeah, I actually felt like, oh my God, I know him. It's like, hey, bro. <laughs> um, but I'm getting a bit nervous right now. So bear with me. I 
I also don't know if I'm going to trans-channel him or I'm going to translate his message. So I see him with um, Patroclo, um, Patroclus, and it's like, I see um, Achilles wounded, like he's limping and Patroclo is helping him to stand up and walk. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm seeing them like that. So Achilles is sitting down and Patroclus next to him, kneeling next to him, holding his hand. He's saying that even when he went looking for fame and glory, that was just a story he grew up he grew up with and the memory from from his relatives, his ancestors, everything was about the war about conquering, about accumulating power and he didn't know about something different than that. But the difference of his story and why he appeals to people is not because of the great things he accomplished in the war field, but because at the end he lost <laughs> his mind because of love, because of grief. He could have conquered the world, but what really touched his soul was love. And it doesn't matter if people, there's some people that believe that he and Patroclus were sexually involved and others just romantically involved and others is just um, um, a sibling kind of love. It's love at the end. It was love and it's still love. A love greater than any treasure, than any gold, but it was a still human love with a touch of divinity, and it was a flow, flow with love, a uh, A broken love, a love of mystery and secret, and holding back things, holding back feelings. And it's one other thing when <clears throat> people read their story and they believe whatever they want to believe about their story. He wants people to open their hearts and open their mind and see beyond the bodies, the gender, and what it means to connect with someone else, what it means to be understood and to be accepted.
and to commit to someone else to commit to be there for them to nurture them protect them he doesn't want people to sacrifice their lives for someone else It worked for him, for Patroclo, because it was a different time. It's not needed anymore. But it's more of a symbol. If you're willing to let go of everything you, you, you think is meaningful for you, family, honor, fame, if you're willing to let yourself die, to let your old self die. To quit to your pride, to your beliefs, to everything you consider it sacred. And lose yourself in love, to really fall in love, is to let go of any thought, any belief you could have, you could treasure, or you could hold on to. Falling in love is accepting that you know nothing about life, about the afterlife, about death, about what is really, really sacred. Falling in love is about the, let your spirit talk, let your soul take control. And when you lose everything, when you lose your ground, when you lose your mind, when you lose your story, and even when you lose that someone you thought was the destiny of your love, what is left is only love. A love you can have for yourself. A love you can have for the world. It doesn't matter who you fall in love with or what you fall in love with. What remains is the energy of love, the force of love that moves you that moves you to create something new, to create a new world, to create a new destiny for yourself. So people come into your life and you fall in love with them. You marry them, you have families or kids. <clears throat> but they only come to you to show you what love is capable of doing. The tsunami that destroys everything. <laughs> so the divinity within yourself can be unveiled. And if you fall in love with something, with a house, with a job, with a career, with a dream, it's always the same. It doesn't matter if you can accomplish it or not. If you win that medal, if you win the trophy, if you win the war, it's a passion that moves you. 
the one that remained. Is the love that inspired you the one that remained? And the one that can be seeded into something new to the infinite. But even when I say to you these things, you cannot fathom them with your mind. You can only feel them moment by moment in the arms of your beloved or in the cyst of your success. And you will lose it again and again. And you will feel lost, heartbroken, grieving. Death will come to your door many times. Grief will be your partner longer than anyone else. Pain will know you better than any fail or any little success. Because you're alive, and that's a good thing, <laughs> and that's great, and that's beautiful. I give up, give up on life. I was willing to give up on life because of fame and glory. At the end, I give up on life because of grief. None of that made sense. When I reunited with my beloved, I wish I could go back in time. Just one more minute holding their hand, just one, one minute, enjoying the sea, the sun on my face, the kiss of the salt air, the yelling, the screams, the mumbling, the birds, the forest, the rivers, human life, the drop on the ocean, and one drop of water can heal the world. I think that's it. <laughs> so love. <laughs> um, okay. I think that was short, but but beautiful and moving. Well, it moved me. <laughs> Certainly. Um, I'm not sure if Patroclo had anything to say. He's saying something like, he likes um, he likes when people understand that God, gods, goddesses, uh, 
mythological beings um, or spirits. They are seen for what they are. Um, Um, energy, energy from nature, manifestations of nature in a different plane. And they are supposed to inspire people. And many times people just repeat what others have been done, religions. Um, Repeating something to feel united as a as um, a nation, as a country, um, as a community, as a religious community. Um, and people look up to them, <clears throat> like in in their times, they will look up to the to the gods and goddesses and they will kind of uh, surrender to not having a choice and feeling like puppets in the hands of of the gods um, when really they could connect with them through through nature through the earth. And what was needed at the time is that they could awaken people, humans, they could awaken their own power and not giving, giving up to their power and giving it to these gods and goddesses. Every time they made a prayer asking for um, something to happen. They, they were saying, I'm, I'm worthless. I, I have no control of my life. And life is kind of like that. It's about understanding that we don't really have control about, what, about what's going on with us and with the rest of the world, with our minds. We can complain about it. We can moan and weep about our destiny, about our lives. Um, there's not much that can be done unless we surrender to love, not to any God, not to any mythological um, being, not to any spirit. Um, understanding that the spirit guides are not supposed to tell us what we have to do. They are only showing us possibilities. Just like Achilles was sharing his own experience, experience um, it doesn't mean it's the only one possible. It's the only perspective, the only valid perspective. And it happens also in relationships when you give up everything because of your partner, because of your relationship or your family or your community. Uh, you are dishonoring yourself, your own sacredness, your own divinity. Putting yourself in the first place is an egoistical, is selfish. You are the only one you wanna, you're going to really know in your world life. You will never really touch someone else. You will barely trace ideas you have of others. He's saying, when I was alive, I I thought I knew Achilles with all my heart and all my body. And at the end of my life, I realized 
I, I knew nothing. I never really touched him. I never really reached to him until it was in the afterlife. That's when we really get to know each other, understand each other. Everything else, th there was something, always something between us. And that's what happens in human lives all the time, that there is always something between you and your partner, between you and your job. It's the idea <laughs> of your job, the idea of your partner, the idea you have about relationships, the idea you have about what your life is supposed to be. But when you hold love, when you, you let love guide you, That's when miracles happen. And that's when you're truly alive. Otherwise, it's like you're dead. You're a dead person pretending to live. When they said, Love is the answer. It wasn't a metaphorical way of speaking. So when you are, whenever you are in doubt, you don't go to any God. You don't go to any spirit. You don't, don't go to any relative or friend or magazine or influencer <laughs> you go to love thank you <clears throat> so <laughs> thank you for joining me in this adventure of uh, channeling this very alive beings they are not from a book for me they are filled with um, well aliveness <laughs> so i hope you enjoy it and you get something out of their message <sighs> yeah and happy spring for those in the north and happy autumn for us here in the south um, I wish you a beautiful blossom in the spring and that you can share your fruits and we're going in war here in the south preparing a long winter <laughs> um, Happy new astrological year. And remember, well, I have shared this on my Instagram. Um, we are Saturn is in Pisces for the next three years. So dreams um, are being supported by structure, order, um, we've been asked to do the job if we really want to commit to our dreams. And as Achilles and Patroclo said, let love guide your dream, not your ambition, <laughs> and not your mind, not your intellect, but the love you have for what you can do and what you can share. Okay. Thank you once again and see you next time. Wish you peace beyond all understanding. <laughs>